Okay, so in the last lesson, we talked about how glasses, when you hit them, can vibrate and how water can dampen the vibration and change the pitch. This time, in this lesson, we're going to talk about drumming, and your job at the end of this is going to be to make a drum. So let's take a look at the different parts of a drum. So you've probably seen uh, drummers playing on a drum set that looks like this, and some of you might be drummers, and so you might know your way around. But let's take a look at the basics of a drum. The basics of a drum are a drum head, which is some sort of membrane that's pulled tight over the actual drum itself, the case. Okay, so... Uh, if the tighter this is pulled, the higher the pitch. And as you can see, the bigger the drum also, the lower the pitch. And we can use these tension rods. And what these actually do, if I put a, uh, if I put a um, drum key here and turn, uh, this will pull tighter downwards, which will put more tension on the drum head and raise the pitch. So if I have the pitch here, and I turn this, hear the difference in pitch. We also have a special drum here called the snare drum and it's special because on the bottom it has these things called snares and this little switch here makes the snares uh, lose contact with the bottom of the drum and so the drum sounds normal. But if I tighten the switch back up it puts these little metal snares in contact with this bottom uh, drum head, and so they vibrate too, and so you get a completely different sound. So what exactly happens to give us sound when we hit a drum? Well, when we hit the drum, the drum head vibrates the air around, and it also vibrates the air inside the drum. So you might ask, okay, well why have a drum head on the bottom? Well, the drum head on the bottom that you can see here is actually called the resonant head. And what the resonant head does is it sends the air vibrations back up and gets them trapped inside the drum so that the uh, sound will sustain for longer. Now let's see if we can catch some of those vibrations in slow motion. So of course, that's not all that you see on a drum set. You also see these uh, metal pieces called cymbals. And cymbals also make sound the same way by, by vibrating, but they're made out of metal, so you get a much different sound. And there's different parts of the cymbal. You have the edge of the cymbal, you have the main part of the cymbal, and then you have the bell. And the bell is uh, raised and it, it gives you a higher pitch. So we have uh, cymbals also. The theory behind cymbals is that they contain all notes when you hit them. So they never sound out of tune with a song. So you can get different sounds. You can hit in the middle here. You can hit it on the edge. Or you can hit it on the bell. But again, we're making sound through vibration. Let's see if we can capture it in slow-mo. Now, you might have also noticed some pedals down here which is another work of physics and engineering. Uh, because we want to be able to hit this big drum, the bass drum, but we don't have enough hands, we need to use our feet. And because our feet don't work uh, this way, we're kicking forward, or at least not very easily, we want to be able to step down. And so what engineers have done is worked out a way where pushing down on the pedal pulls on a spring, which turns a rod attached to a chain, sending the mallet forward. So all we have to do is push down. And over here we see another pedal. And this pedal is attached to uh, a rod that pulls down on the top cymbal, closing the two cymbals together, which means we can get so many sounds out of this. We can get the normal cymbal sound. We can get a half-closed cymbal sound. 
which if you're uh, rock fans, that's what you hear a lot. Or we can get a fully closed dampened cymbal sound. And then we can have a combination of all of them by opening and closing. Another thing we can do is add to our cymbals uh, these things called moon gels, which are made out of the same material uh, that those sticky hands are made out of. And what moon gels do, as you can imagine by the way they're built, is they absorb the vibration and they dampen the sound. So if I have a normal drum that sounds like this, and I put a moon gel on here, you're going to hear a difference. And if I add another moon gel to it, or my whole stack of moon gels. You'll see it takes away the vibration. Now lastly, drums don't just change sound depending on uh, how big they are, small they are, or how tight the drum head is. It also depends on what we use to hit them. So these are typical drumsticks that you might find. But we also have some other options. You might have seen drummers playing with uh, mallets. And mallets are great because you don't hear the attack of the drumstick, but you still get the sound. You might have also seen these, which some people call hot rods. And what these do is they provide, instead of one large attack, they provide several smaller attacks. So you get uh, a slightly different sound. It's a little softer. And even softer still are these wire brushes that you might have seen usually used in jazz. Now, the cool thing about these wire brushes is, well, first of all, uh, instead of one uh, point of contact, which is the tip of the drumstick, here you have hundreds of points of contact, which give you a different sound. Of course, they're not as strong, so it's lighter. But also, certain drum heads, like this one used to be, even though this one's not in great condition, have this white coating that other drums don't. And this right white coating allows us to rake the brush across to get sound. So we, you might hear drummers play something like this. Which just gives us another option. So what's your job? Your job is to make a drum. A drum, again, is anytime you stretch a drum head over uh, the actual base of a drum. So you could make one out of a coffee cup with a piece of plastic wrap stretched over it. What it needs to do uh, are, are two things. One, it has to be a drum, by strict definition, that produces sound. And two, you have to be able to change the pitch. And so that's what I'm challenging you. That's your new science lab. Now, to leave off, I'm going to show you how all of these things that we ha we've looked at today come together to produce what you usually hear when you listen to, like, uh, a song um, on Spotify or on Apple Music or whatever music service you listen to. So what you normally hear when you hear the drums. Let's take a listen.